guys, Jonah here, back, back with another beer review. And we are looking at the ones to watch. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know why there's an elephant there, but uh, yeah, it's that one if you're following um, on the Beer 52 uh, quest. But this brewery is proper. There is an article in there. It is Polly's, Polly's Brewery, which is up there. And if you didn't already know, Polly's Brewery is from North Wales, not South Wales like this, but Dwichi of Bibia, Welsh like that. I mean proper Welsh, people that can speak Welsh. I was learning Welsh. Um, I didn't get very far. I used that app, that phone app, which I uh, can't remember what it's called now, but I was learning Welsh and it got properly hard so i did a little bit but uh that's it quatch anyway this is the beer we are doing today uh polly's uh, brew it's lost dark magic and um it's a stout at six percent and it's roasted barley dark crystal chocolate and brown malt so a lot of malt it's proper malty look at that uh spider diagram over here Looks a little bit like a fish, a fish that's been beheaded or something like that. Um, anyway, it says Lost Dark Magic has Polly's Brew honouring, sorry, I'll move it over there, uh, the robust dark beers of yesteryear, the forged formation, formative drinking years, letting the malt ball bill do the talking. Oh my God, I can't do the talking. Um, voiding the need for masses of dry hops. Got lots of malt in, as I've said, um, and they use Columbus, it says. Columbus, one of the sea hops uh, from America, which is proper. I like that. Um, so these are the proper Welsh guys that speak Welsh. Um, and dun, 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 there. Is the cat why is it focusing on my face when it should be focusing on the can polys maybe it's because it's a weird can um six percent which is pretty proper and if you turn it around here blodders um there we go polys if you forget where it's from and it says stout columbus that's all it says mold or mold in north wales Sounds like an English name, not a Welsh name. Um, ingredients. Where are we looking? There we go. Barley, oats, wheat and hops and yeast and all that kind of stuff. So oats and wheat in this bad boy. And it's a 440 can. I'm loving it. The actual can itself is pretty. It looks like a kind of smoke rising don't you think or maybe that's a reminiscent of a sea or something with sun or fluid which rising steam craziness right let's open this bad boy up because this is a stout and it's a reasonably new one this has not been in the fridge um i'm a firm believer that uh stouts and porters too, and stronger beers, dark beers, shouldn't really go in the fridge. Um, temperature doesn't really affect malt too much. So the only thing is to watch out for, give the can a bit of a squeeze, because as you well know, if you have a can, oh, that's in the way. Let me put my finger out. There we go. There we go. A nice, uh, nice picture for the front of this video. Yeah, if your can is very taut and it can't be squeezed, I would recommend putting it in the fridge because that does help. It won't explode too much. Just under a finger's head. But what a lovely head, lovely colour. Off, off white, uh, that would be a cream, I would say. Buttercream head. The beer itself is absolutely jet black dark maybe a hint of redness or brownness right at the bottom um, and you cannot see 
You can see me. You can't see me doing it through the beer anyway. And neither can John Cena. And you know what John Cena would say? He would say, subscribe to this channel um, and make sure you click down below. Do that or I'm sending John Cena to get you. It's lovely dark, it's darkness, it's roastness. Maybe the hint of leather, like a Chesterfield sofa. Maybe cigar smoke in there. They said some chocolate, I'm not. I'm getting much more roastiness and leatheriness than the chocolate itself, but maybe that's more on the uh, on the mouth taste. Wow, it's almost like there's like Rausch malt. I know there isn't, but it's almost like there's some Rausch malt in there. And I know that this is going to be a lovely creamy bad boy. Well, I'm hoping it is. Because, dear viewer, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, the, uh, the addition of oats especially, but a little bit of wheat too, adds creaminess and it doesn't matter if it's an ipa or a stout like this it adds a bit of creaminess to it which is it's unctuous it makes it makes everything go down your throat smoother than a cashmere what's it cheers and beers guys Oh, getting a lovely sweetness as well. Honeycomb, um, but there's the burntness. Cinder toffee, that kind of sweet, crackly, dark smokiness. A coffee with perhaps too much sugar. Um, oh, this is nice. This actually tastes quite like um the vocate some of the vocation beers maybe with not so much sort of peanut or whatever but one of the vocation beers that i had that was quite strong i think it's about eight percent ish eight nine percent uh in the christmas box so the vocation beers naughty and nice it was called look back subscribe to my channel and look back through the playlist you'll find it um just around christmas at the turn of the new year that's kind of what this tastes like but it's lower strength so this is six percent i think those were about eight or nine percent so but it's that same sort of unctuousness so oh this is a lovely bit maybe a bit of nut in there like a, a roast nut um maybe not a roast peanut could be peanut maybe a more creamy one like a cashew or something roasted gorgeous dive in for some more oh it said it was i think it said it was dry hopped i don't know why you dry hop a beer like this but with columbus um and you can't i have to say you can't really taste the hops too much so to be honest it didn't really matter uh what hops you put in there but you are getting a little bit of bitterness um and i can taste that and it's making my mouth um yeah you can definitely get them the mouth feel of the bitterness but if you're a fan of Columbus hops, you're probably going to struggle in actually, you know, picking that out within this beer. Um, I quite like Columbus, but I think it goes better when it's mixed with other sea hops. Cascade, Centennial, Chinook. Ooh, one of those. I beg your pardon, dear viewer. But that's what happens when you drink uh, beer reasonably fast especially beer that's in a can if you're having beer draft um belching although it does happen not so much 
there is quite a strong tide line right at the top where we started. The second mouthful, it is there, but it's not. Look at that one. You could that's like a spirit level almost. That one is a bit jagged. Mick jagged. And the rolling stones, yeah. Um we shall see what we get. Sorry, dear viewer. It's almost the end of the week. It is a Thursday. Thirsty Thursday, we could call it. Um and when you're having a six percent beer after doing some hard work. Um, and I'd love to be able to tell you where I work, but unfortunately I can't, because if I did, I would have to kill you. That is a better tide line. However, look, it's crying. It's already dribbling down. I don't know if you can see. And I've, I've said this before, but you can see it's almost like a whiskey. You get this oily kind of slightly off colour in the uh, the foam, the head. But that now there are definite tide lines in there. If you like such things, and I really do. Um, this one will not disappoint. It's getting a little bit more bitter. Um, as I go down the glass and I'm thinking the strongest bitterness is going to be at the bottom so when we've got down to kind of espresso size or you know maybe that's a double espresso it even looks a bit like an espresso with a crema layer around the top and it kind of tastes like that too um, but yeah that bitterness is maybe getting a little bit astringent now um but overall i'm really liking this beer it's nice i do especially in winter um i do love dark beers and trying different ones trying stouts trying porters imperials import imperial porters and stouts mm, maybe not so much not not too much my liking but that said, my beer of the year in 2022 was an Imperial Stout. Uh, it just happened to have extra banana in it. It was a vocation one. If you see that, and I think they're still doing it in the supermarket. Definitely try it because it's like, I think it's about 10%. Um, pretty sure they're about five or they used to be five pounds, but you're getting a 10% beer. You know, go to the local pub, you'll get a normal pint of beer and it will be sort of five quid. So a 10% beer, it's almost like buying two pints, especially if you drink strong lager. I highly recommend that beer. Mmm, yeah. that's really weird. I thought the bottom part label out um and there it is by the way bullies she can put the kettle on in my opinion yes i thought it was going to be super concentrated dark espresso wrongness but it was really sweet so i guess the sugars i always think about this when you've got a a liquid especially a complex liquid not water but a liquid that has a uh, substance it has things um dissolved is that the right word or maybe in suspension uh the heavier particles tend to drop to the bottom am i right maybe uh someone that's more highly educated in chemistry uh can let me know in the comments below but I always find um, that the top of your beer, your first sip, does not taste the same as the bottom sip because things have dropped down. Um, not so much with macro beers that have been filtered. You know, they've been filtered uh, 
beyond an inch of their life sometimes, but with a sort of non filtered, more natural kind of smaller brewery type of beer. Which is cool. It still has particles. It still has things, micro thing, probably microplastic. No, I'm only joking. Micro. Maybe particles of grain, maybe sugars, complex sugars, heavy sugars settle down to the bottom of the glass. And maybe that's what's happened uh, in this case, because maybe things do drop out. Maybe it does take a, a bit of time to do um, to let gravity, you know, take effect. However, I think there's something to be said for that. Um, yeah, density fluid dynamics, things like that. Am I talking nonsense? Yes, of course I am. This is the Uncle John of Brewing Channel uh, and beer tasting as well, um, and more the beer tasting at the moment. But it has been absolute pleasure sharing my Thursday evening with you, dear viewer. I hope you understand. Um, and I really like people commenting. So if you have a view on this, why not tell me down below. Anyway, this has been Uncle Jonah drinking beer and reviewing beer and giving you my opinion, because at the end of the day, it is only my opinion um, on the beers I'm having. I hope you uh, appreciate what I do. And um, we will see you real soon for another beer review. If it's not tomorrow, I do apologise, but I'm back in the hospital for some medieval treatments um, to try and prevent the cancer that I have uh, from taking over my body. Um, so if I'm not with you for the next couple of days, it's probably because <laughs> I've been infected by some uh, GM. I think it's, I'm not sure what, exactly what they inject you with, but I think it's a GM virus based on TB. Um, so over the next couple of days, I'm going to be infected uh, with TB um, by the doctor. What more can I say? That is properly random, but that is exactly what happens. And dear viewer, um, I'm not going to tell you because it will put you off your beer. But if you have beer, such loveliness, such as Polly's La, uh, Lost Dark Magic. I think you will have a happy day because this really is a nice beer. Guys, we'll see you real soon. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. This has been Uncle Jonah saying, I love all of you. Take care.